Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. Stranger Things Season 4 is about to finally drop its conclusion, and I'm hoping that we're finally going to get answers about what the Upside Down actually is. But I've got a massive theory that explains everything in the show that I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. So this season dropped a few clues, like one being thrown into a portal, the date in Nancy's diary. But there are still a lot of unanswered questions, and my theory will tie all of those questions together. For instance, where do one's powers come from? How are he and the others able to move objects and read minds? How do these abilities connect to the Upside Down? When will people acknowledge that this show is borrowing heavily from the Cortexicone kids on Fringe? Hey, Parison, you're going to talk about Fringe? Do it on your own time. This is Stranger Things. You're right. Sorry. Anyways, I have a theory that's going to connect all of these threads that I think also explains everything that we've seen on Stranger Things so far. So beware. If I'm right, then none of these things will seem strange for that much longer. First, we have to talk about where one's powers come from, because after all, every other kid in the Rainbow Room got their powers from him. He tells us that Brenner used his blood to give the others powers while they were still in the womb. When Papa finally realized he could not control me, he tried to recreate me. Now, first of all, it is possible that the show is going to explain all of this with magic or God or divine intervention or the force or whatever, but I'm going to give an explanation that could have its roots in theoretical science. So there is a theory that everything in the universe is connected simply because we all share the same space between atoms. Essentially, we are all made up of atoms, but in between the atoms, there is this vast amount of empty space. In fact, this space between things takes up the vast majority of the space in the universe. So let's just presume for a second that you could exist on a subatomic level and you could fly through this infinite space between atoms you would not be able to tell where the atoms of Ryan area began and the atoms of my shirt ended. So in this way, we are all connected by this vast, infinite nothingness that all of our atoms are swimming around in. Now, scientists have used the Higgs boson atom smasher to accelerate particles so we can see what's smaller than an atom. And every time they accelerate a particle, they keep finding smaller particles beneath it. So unofficially, this is called the God particle. It's a teeny tiny single point. It's what the singularity of a black hole compresses light and matter into. This particle is so small that it contains vast amounts of energy and is incomprehensible to the human mind. I don't get it. It's... I guess it's, it's kind of like the quantum realm in the Ant-Man movies. Gotcha. The point is, this God particle is between all of us. We are all connected on an infinitely tiny level. And, now this is key, I think that in the show, complex neural structures like our brains are like hubs in this vast, interconnected network of subatomic energy. Like when you look at the Earth at night and cities dot the continents. These cities are our brains lighting up this subatomic network of energy and thought. And this vast subatomic network that connects all things, that is the dimension that we think of as the upside down. Let me explain how all of this perfectly fits. So this brings us to one. I think that one's powers are able to tap into the subatomic energy that connects everything. He begins by reaching into the thoughts of small animals. He is accessing their thought energy through this network. Then he's slowly able to access more complex neural networks, those of human beings. He can read his father's memories and see what he did in the war. They had done things, Eleven. Such awful things. So when one finds the nest of spiders, they actually give him the instinctual understanding of how he can manifest his powers. What do you mean by that? Well, it's like when you learn to do something and you have to visualize it as something else. Like when you do math and you carry the one. You're not actually carrying the one, you're doing math, but it's a way for us to use a metaphor to imagine what our brains are capable of. In his case, he has to imagine his brain as a spider. He sees that everyone's mind is connected through this vast interconnected web, the subatomic network of energy I'm talking about. And he sees this connection like a spider's web. And spiders can feel the vibrations of anything on their web. And one is able to sense the mental vibrations that humans create. Also, one is able to access this network to move atoms around, which is a kind of telekinesis. So when we see Eleven and the other kids moving objects with their minds, what they're actually doing is moving the atoms out of the way atoms they could access through the same subatomic network. And also, this network is accessed by using your brain. See, Eleven has a mental block after Season 3 that Brenner helps her to unlock in Season 4. She didn't need chemicals or a potion to get back her powers. She needed to allow herself to once again access those parts of her brain so she could once again tap into that neural network that we are all a part of. But what does this have to do with the Upside Down? Well, like I said, there is this vast, infinite energy between all things. Think of this energy field like an onion. Onions have layers. All of us live on the outermost skin. This is the physical world. World hidden beneath Hawkins. It 
bleeds into ours. So the core here is like the red energy at the center of everything. It's the force. It connects us. It holds us all together. So when Eleven fought one, she ripped open a hole in reality, like drilling a hole into the onion. And that sends one straight into this red energy world. So before this, the God particle dimension had no physical form. We see here that it has no gravity, no up, no down. It's basically formless, a place of pure thought and creation. But as soon as one is forced into it, this dimension begins to take on a physical structure. Remember, one has his own personal space in the Upside Down. It's even described as a place he does not want anyone else to be. He seems surprised, almost. Like he didn't want me there. This is the first place he created for himself, his first home. It's fragmented because he cannot create perfectly physical objects in this realm. It's more like the realm is shaping itself to his mind. So he's basically trapped in this formless void for years. This is the mental representation of the God particle dimension that actually has no physical form. Like if I told you to close your eyes and picture a house. So the house only exists in your mind, but you can still kind of see it. It both is and isn't at the same time. So so that red, formless world that I talked about exists at the core of the onion. Vecna's visualization of it is just outside of the core. After one was trapped in this world, he began to extend his influence and to create extensions of himself. The Demogorgons have no eyes, they're just gaping hungry mouths. A visualization of one's hunger to eat minds. The Mind Flayer is also an extension of one, just like the vines and the bat creatures. Like a spider, one begins to weave a web that moves in and out of this subatomic layer, filling in the gaps between atoms with his own influence. Wait, watch out for the vines. It's all a hive mind. So, the part of the Upside Down that is closest to the physical world is the Black Void. It's this vast, endless space where Eleven is able to reach out to specific minds in the real world. This is Eleven sending her brainwave energy through that vast subatomic thought network. This is where she can find a bright neural hub, like the Russian general or her mother. So this Black Void is like a wormhole into other people's thoughts that she can access. And she does this by going in through the top layer of the onion and then finding whoever it is on the other side of the onion. Like I said, it's like a wormhole. Eleven accidentally opened the gate to the Upside Down when she went into this void and saw a Demogorgon because one's influence had already stretched out and was getting closer to our world. So think of it like one was slowly sending his mind closer to the surface of the onion where he finally encountered Eleven. This encounter connected Vecna to the real world and allowed him to open a gate to the surface of the onion. And we learn in this season that this is the date when Will disappeared, and everything in the Upside Down is from this date. This diary should be full of entries. It's not. The last entry is November 6, 1983. The day Will went missing. Yeah, why is that? Because the Upside Down is without form. But the moment Eleven touched Vecna's mind through the Demogorgon, then it opened up a gate between the outer layer and the inner layer of the onion. So suddenly, the inner layer took on the physical form of the world outside, like the negatives of a photograph. Light hits the blank film and the chemicals burn in that image. So the Upside Down is like a photograph of the physical world on the day Eleven opened the gate and Will disappeared. And this action allowed Vecna to access the real world. Layers between reality became thinner and the Demogorgon was able to slip through into our world because what Vecna has always wanted was to access the real world, to return and finish what he started. And when Will is taken in the Upside Down, Vecna puts a piece of himself into Will. He does this so his mind will stay connected to Vecna's, and then Vecna is able to use his body as a proxy in the real world. And he did the same thing in season three, using Billy to spread throughout the world like vines in a pumpkin patch. And in this season, he is now powerful enough that he doesn't have to use a proxy. He can just reach into people's minds like he did when he was a boy. I think this is because the Russian gate made the layer between the upside down and the real world so thin that he was able to extend his influence outward from the center of the onion up to the surface. Wait, that doesn't explain explain how they're able to enter into the portal or why it's all flipped upside down. Sure it does. Vecna opens up a tear in reality that connects to the Upside Down. The Upside Down is like a photograph, like a memory of the real world, but it's actually somewhere between the physical world and the red, pure thought world at the center of the onion. So entering the Upside Down is like entering a plane of reality with different physical laws, like a singularity that's compressing into a black hole. You're being compressed and the same laws of physics don't apply. I also think 
that we'll find out that there have been others like one in the past. People with abilities, miracle workers from history or religion. And they have seen visions of this formless place and they called it hell. I also think that the red place is the only place where Vecna is vulnerable because it's where his physical form actually exists. So it's probably where Eleven will have to go fight him. And I'm going to offer up another theory on the ending. I think that the season will end with Vecna and his minions breaking free and spreading across Earth. But that's just my thoughts and theories on the Upside Down. Let me know yours in the comments below, or you can at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.